Why? Why are you doing this to me? I want to see you struggle. Why? What did I do to you? Nothing. Nothing at all. I just want to see it. Thank you to our final patrons, Strawbones, Roto4765, Midnight Gem Lord, Art Goon, and Sean. Now, we're on this breakdown slash discussion on how I need to see Lancelot struggle. Please do me a favor and leave your own thoughts on what you want Lancelot to struggle in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure you hit that little notification also miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon down below. It's more for as as one, kind of one, down month, getting like exclusive videos, early content, and more. Also, now become a member of the channel for as little as $3 a month to get the same perks and more. Now, let's hop into the discussion. What's up, guys? I'm the Pencil here, and here we are to talk about how I need to see Lancelot of the Four Knights of the Struggle. Be pushed to his limits. In fact, I may want to see him broken, but that's a that's another video for another time. And there's another character in the Four Knights group that I would preferably want to see broken before I see Lancelot broken. And let's talk about why. So the thing is, Lancelot is him. Like, H-I-M, all capitals. You don't need to put any periods in between. It's not an acronym or anything. He's just him. It may be he's Himothy Herner, him Duncan, him him hunkin if you will like legitimately he is him personified given form put to page and illustrated like a hundred percent he's him and i love him being him like he's amazing for that very reason that he is him and only him above him by him for him do him but i do think that you can only be him for so long without it getting a little bit repetitive repetitive or boring or simple i think he needs to be balanced right that's the main reason because the thing is right now as i've made multiple videos on talking about already lancelot is not balanced for the narrative he's in <laughs> he, he's simply not like simply plain put looking at the narrative and it's like teetering balance right now he's very over he's like over tuned like he is android 21 lab coat when they dropped her first in the dragon ball fighter z like there's they did not <laughs> lancelot did not care nor did the developers in this case nakaba care about how balanced they were how good they would be in certain matchups all that they just said we're going to give this character everything whether it be strength power intelligence battle iq speed all that we're just going to give them all that and let it rock we'll see what the community thinks about it and obviously there have been mis responses in the community like i've seen two sides of the coin well really there's three but two major conflicting sides there's the one side of the fandom that i happen to be on where it's like lance is him this is epic this is cool i would expect nothing less from bond's son he better be goaded and he better stay goaded yes and the other side of the fandom being like he's too cracked he's too stupid he's too dumb like we, we need to remove him from the narrative somehow we need a nerf him we got to seal him away we got to do something because he's just it's just too much too little too quickly i'm, I'm, I'm not rocking with it and then the third side is like they just don't care they're enjoying the rest of the narrative and lance is kind of just there and i respect all three sides of course i have a side that i'm on but at the same time i can see the other side's perspectives and heck i've even talked about it and i think that lack of balancing can only work so well don't get me wrong the original series definitely also had a distinct lack of balancing it was sort of built into the plot of the story early on even like the sins were just too strong for their verse for the most part, like they had a, a few real antagonists that could actually do things to them. And even then, those antagonists were sometimes themselves like Bonds. But well, realistically, realistically thinking about it, Meliodas most serious opponent in season one was Bond. <laughs> Like twice. That was the only person that really pushed Mel to his limits. Meanwhile, against Helbrum, he was berserk and had no control over himself. Even against Demon Hendrickson, I'm confident a berserk Meliodas could watch that man. But regardless, Heck, even King could have watched that man with an Awakened Spirit Spear. But they just didn't because, you know, they were too snapped. And I get that. It's sort of just built into the story. Like, obviously, Nakaba likes to write snapped characters. And thus, Lancelot is now currently the snapped character. But the thing is, with Lancelot, is that, like, there's not even an illusion of balance. Like, something I'll give the original series of Seven Deadly Sins, especially in its first season. Even though it was very clear that all the sins were dominant. They were top tiers. They were beasts, monsters, and demons, quite literally in some cases. 
there still was the illusion of balance. Like, Meliodas would still seemingly struggle in fights. Gila seemed like an actual opponent until King showed up. Gil Thunder seemed like an actual opponent until the truth was revealed. Hendrickson seemed like an actual opponent and stayed an actual opponent until he got, like, revenge countered. Like, that's the thing. There was genuine believability in the fact that despite the sins being so powerful, despite them being so overpowered, there still were, like, checks and balances built into the world so that they weren't, like, overly overpowered. Like, legitimately, like, Isekai MC level where they have all the abilities in the verse and they kind of just solo naturally and they don't struggle ever. There were moments where they struggled. And the thing is, they did have each other. Even if you could reread all of season one and see that realistically, none of the sins were really that pressed unless they fought each other, they had each other. They were relative to each other in most cases. Meliodas and Bond were able to have an intense knockout, drag out fight twice because they were close in power. Their abilities allowed that. King had a direct rival that he could compare himself to, even though he ended up washing Helper from the moment he got that mental fortitude amp, he still had a threat. Diane, Diane actually kind of got bullied a lot in season one, I won't lie, like, thinking back on it, she had that one cool moment against Helbrum, but then Helbrum did her dirty, so, realistically, it is pretty rough, but even with that being the case, that illusion for the antagonist and also that relativity in comrades was something that allowed the narrative to function well and healthily getting the overpowered character effect without exactly snapping the narrative over any of the characters knees not even meliodas really snapped the narrative in half he needed help supposedly supposedly i don't think he really did but he did in that case so we'll let it slide but even with that being the case, what makes Lancelot different is that he has none of that. Nakia was not playing any of those fake games anymore. The closest we had to those fake games was when we didn't know if Lancelot was Lancelot. Like, right at the beginning, when we had Sin, technically that was Lance's introduction. But in reality, eh, not really. <laughs> not really. We met Lance, and Lance revealed that he, yeah, he was the top tier of the verse, and realistically... No one was touching him, and and like he didn't he didn't stop. <laughs> he just let Lance keep cooking. And the thing is, his meal, the, the stuff that Lance was putting up in the kitchen, like taking out the ingredients from the cupboard, getting the meat out of the fridge, seasoning up everything, and throwing it in a pit. Like he is cooking, cooking, cooking to the point where he cooked so hard he stepped on the main villain. Like it, th that's that that's a lot. That that's a lot for for us to be doing. So early on and have Lance literally not struggle once. Not one, the closest we've seen Lance to struggling is when Gother put him to sleep. And even then we know he wasn't in any real danger then. And he probably could have watched Gother if he really needed to. So realistically, in all honesty, we have not seen Lance struggle once. He's been nothing but overpowered. And not even in like the balanced overpowered sense. Like in the broken overpowered sense. Like he's stepping on our main villain broken. And it's kind of, kind of rough, right? Because then, what what tension do we have? Obviously, we do have the emotional storytelling side of Lance and the character storytelling, not just, like, big battles. But still, we're in a battle manga. Sure, do I respect the fact that Lance is going to have trouble going back to Benwick and talking with his mom and dad after failing his one and only mission that he gave to himself? Yeah, that's rough. I appreciate that character conflict. Also, do I appreciate the whole character conflict he has with Jericho, considering his older sister figure wants to anime older sister figure him? Like, it, do I get that? Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to just see mental struggle. <laughs> I want to see physical struggle. I know this is totally hypocritical coming from me, like a guy who always says, hey, if you want me to like your characters, torture them mentally. I, I do also like a little bit of physical stress. Like I do like to see characters going through it, especially if that will have future ramifications on their mental state. I think that would be pretty interesting. And I think Nakaba, through making Lance so powerful, is like either purposely or inadvertently avoiding any of this narrative balancing without lance being narratively balanced i'm not exactly sure how invested i'm going to be in any of his solo journey i can be invested in percy gawain and the personal platoon's journey because i know they aren't the mightiest they are not the strongest there are people who can come out the clutch right now and body bag them or put up a really 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 good fight same thing with tristan's platoon 
even though they have an extreme powerhouse in Tristan, you know what else they have? An extreme liability in Tristan. So while they do have their healer, fighter, leader all rolled into one, they also have his peak of power being locked behind literal insanity and a lack of self-control, which will do more harm than good. There can be tension there, there can be fear there, there can be narrative weight and heft and concern for antagonists. Lance? Like, what are we going to have him do? Just run through and solo the entire path to Bedwick? Like, I don't know. It, it, it feels weird that Lance is put in this position where he kind of just gets to ignore a good half of the gameplay. Like, hypothetically, you know how... I'm trying to think of an apt comparison to this video game-wise. But you know how in certain games, when you get too high level, you kind of just stop caring about mob fights for a while, if not entirely. Like, you've gotten so strong that literally a majority of the narrative doesn't even matter to you, or a majority of the gameplay doesn't even matter to you, and you're kind of just bored. Like, my favorite game of all time, if, well, no, it, maybe not, who knows, there, there are like five games in constant rotation for that spot. But one of my favorite games of all time is Kingdom Hearts 2. After getting to level 99 realistically getting to about like level 50 something even on critical mode my brain kind of just shut off like mob fights were just annoying like any progression roblox the only mob fight that actually challenged me was the final one on the way to the cavern to remembrance but other than that like my brain literally shut down even when i had like half the health i did on a normal mode playthrough or a hard mode playthrough on a critical mode i was just blazing through everything because i was so strong the only thing that challenged me were the boss fights that means a majority of your game just doesn't engage me anymore. And to be fair, I still do love KH2 combat, and I still do fight mobs just for fun occasionally. But still, that's what happens. And the thing is, it's even harder to do something with that on a narrative front. Because that either means that we have to skip all of Lancelot's journey, because it wouldn't be interesting to watch, because he's going to one-shot everything. And or we just see him one-shot everything. And, and that's no fun either. Like, I don't know. Good, at least to me, good battles have a weight, a heft, a tension to them. A worry that one side may not win, whether it be our hero side or our villain side, a protagonist or antagonist for the respective fight. That fear, that concern, that worry is what really makes a good battle to me. And I'm afraid Lancelot can't convincingly have that. Or at least he can, but it would be harder than before. But regardless of how difficult it would be, I want it to happen. I want to see Lancelot struggle. Mainly because, one, narrative balancing. Like, I just think it's required at this point. We can't have Lancelot just not have a threat until, like, endgame when they're fighting Arthur again. Because I, I think that's just a waste of a character journey. Like, the entire time. Sure, once again, we're gonna have the mental journey. We're gonna have the interpersonal relationship journey that he builds. But even then... I think we would benefit a lot more if he had some sort of physical struggle. But two, I think it would lead to a very interesting spot of introspection for Lancelot. Notably, I'm not exactly sure what Lancelot's mentality is on his power. According to Tristan, he just doesn't like to talk about it. Like, he disappeared for three years and then just refuses to speak on it. So he's obviously slightly traumatized in one way or another by having this power anyway, or at least the method he underwent to obtain it. But I think if he runs into a situation where he finds that this power isn't enough, all he went through wasn't enough, we can have a very interesting moment where Lance is forced to really look back on himself, really understand himself and what he went through and actually have introspection on what are his next steps. Because essentially he did all the training. He did everything. He has this insane amount of power now. He thought he was up there. He thought that, yes, this is what I need. This is what I'll do to defeat Arthur, get Jericho back and live the life I always wanted. But if he's faced with an opponent that can force him to struggle, force him to utilize more of his strength, force him to break his limits, and then realize that he's barely anywhere into his journey, and he's actually being challenged, then he's going to reevaluate everything that he is, everything that he's ever done, all the effort that he's put in. And we can have this really interesting moment where Lancelot goes through something that I think Tristan is also going to go through a wondering of whether or not he's worthy of his position. Because that's something that I think every single one of the Fortnite should explore in some depth. Like, just because 
unlike the Seven Deadly Sins, who were a group that was forged with no real expectations that were told to them, outside of the fact that they were going to work under Meliodas, who did have expectations for them that he once again did not tell them at that point, the Four Knights are very specifically being formed to save Britannia. They're very specifically being set up to be the next Seven Deadly Sins, be the next great heroes, be worthy of titles like that. And I think a big important idea that they should all go through is wondering what that means what being the night of war means what being the night of famine the night of death the night of pestilence all of those are deep wonderful questions that i think all these characters should end up asking themselves because one way or another they're all going to face it those titles probably aren't empty they come with more and more than they could probably ever know at least at this point. So seeing Lancelot, the war, the mightiest, the person who was relied on the most, the person whose magic is so great, no weapon can contain it. Seeing him put in a spot where that power, that strength that it took so long for him and he went through so much to cultivate just isn't enough. It truly isn't what would save him, wouldn't guide him, wouldn't make his journey simple. I think it would be great. I think we would have this really beautiful moment where Lancelot, maybe just after just barely winning a battle against this opponent, just barely surviving, or heck, making it add salt to the wound, being saved by somebody else, especially say this battle or opponent appears right before or right outside of Benwick, and he gets saved by his father. Imagine how Lance would feel. He is essentially the pseudo-leader of the group. Yeah, Tristan and Percy, they have their own little platoons with them, but in terms of making decisions, guiding them, being a real de facto leader, it is Lancelot. And due to that, I'm assuming Lancelot, especially based on his one-shot interpretations, has certain ideas of what a leader should be, has certain ideas and focuses on certain prospects and ideas of himself. And where he should stand, being the leader, being the mightiest, and having that position challenged, having it shaken just a little bit. All it has to be is one fight, and to hopefully more opponents afterwards, but mainly one fight to really have him sit back and consider who he is and where he stands. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be super interesting to see him go through that and would really allow a new development for Lancelot that isn't one that's tied to external sources. Because mainly the Arthur conflict and the Jericho conflict are both external. Lance has done nothing wrong with those or he doesn't necessarily have anything to reflect on himself other than I need to stop bad guy and I need to save old friend. That's all he has on his mind at the moment. But if we give him something more complex where he has to look into himself and realize who he is like is he lancelot because of the power he has or does the power he have make him lancelot i think that'd be cool it'd be a great way to take his story and it could change his whole dynamic with the four knights which is another thing i would love to see like he goes back to them and realizes now how they felt how they feel when faced with an overwhelming power all the time he would look down on it before because it's like Eh, whatever. A commandment, a joke, and the main villain, and he can have this foot. Like, legitimately, he was just out there mobbing in the cut before, but now that he's faced with the fact that he can't just mob in the cut everywhere like he used to, he's now forced to realize that maybe he isn't enough. Maybe he doesn't have everything that he needs. Maybe he still has a whole ton of ways to go, and that's not just with getting a weapon, but it's getting a better understanding of himself and the power that he has and the potential that he has stored deep within his flesh. And I think that would be a great catalyst to the wing growing arc. Notably, it's unsure how much of his fairy DNA will directly override his human DNA and allow him to grow wings and maybe fly in human form and stuff like that. Maybe, hypothetically, this could be the catalyst. He's realizing that he needs more power. He needs to have a better understanding of himself. And almost akin to King, who in the original series grew his wings in times of great need and times where he was going through a self-discovery journey himself, just like his mom did, we could have Lancelot go through a very similar thing where he realizes that the power he has isn't enough and he starts to grow wings and exponentially increase his power in order to compensate for what he didn't have before. And he gets a better understanding of himself and comes to a point where he understands who he is independent of the power. And I think that'd be neat. Overall, it's kind of just like a bid to 
do a couple things, but three major ones. One, balance the narrative a bit more. Obviously, Lance is a little bit too broken right now. I think we would definitely benefit from some <laughs> from a Lance balance patch, I suppose, if you want to call it that. A Lance balance patch would do very, very good for just the narrative storytelling up to this point. Giving him opponents that are actually like legitimate opponents would make the battle manga much more interesting than just having Lancelot style and or easily curb stomp all of his opponents. Number two, I think it's a very interesting character thing for Lance to undergo due to the fact that all of his character stuff is sort of just external right now. Giving him some internal character conflicts would be very, very good. I think that would be very appreciated. And thirdly, I think it would be a good catalyst in his own individual power growth. Because I don't think he's at his full potential yet. Even with how powerful he is, I think he still definitely has a long way to go. And him learning that and understanding that would be an interesting way to essentially jumpstart that development into growing wings, getting more powerful, better understanding himself, all that good stuff. However, that's what I think. Please what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that little notification will miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon down below. It's more for as little as one, count them one, dollar a month, healing, exclusive videos, early content, and more. Also, now become a member of the channel for as little as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy the Pencil, writing off.